At this point, we discussed the difference between displacement, a vector quantity having magnitude and direction, and distance, a scalar quantity just having magnitude. In the same way, we have velocity, the vector quantity. Velocity has magnitude and direction, as compared to speed, which just has magnitude. Example velocities might be a car traveling at 100 kilometers per hour north, or a boat traveling at 10 meters per second upstream, or a glacier receding at negative 12 centimeters per year, where we understand the direction indicated by that negative sign again. Note the units. Kilometers per hour is common for a car's velocity. Meters per second is the most standard unit for velocity that we'll see. Centimeters per year is for something going really slow. Really, the units for speed or velocity can be anything where you have displacement unit on the top and a time unit on the bottom. And this leads us to our definition of velocity. Velocity is the rate at which an object changes its position, or the rate of displacement. And here's the equation we can use. The delta d is our displacement, or the change in position. Note that the triangle here is called a delta, and it just indicates the change. Delta t, the change in time. That is, the amount of time it took for the displacement. And in the front, we say vav to indicate that we're calculating an average velocity. In some of our questions, the velocity will stay the same. That is, riding down the road at 15 kilometers per hour. The vav would be 15 kilometers per hour. But sometimes the velocity will be changing, starting from rest and speeding up to 15 kilometers per hour. In that case, the vav would be somewhere between 0 and 15 kilometers per hour. So we say average to cover all these situations. Let's look at an example. In a 100 meter running race, Madison finished in 13 seconds. What was her average velocity? So we write down our equation here. The delta d, in this case, is the displacement or change in position, and that's our 100 meters down the track. Delta t is the time it took for this displacement, or the final time minus the initial time, and we know that it took her 13 seconds to complete the 100 meters. So we can plug in our numbers and calculate the average velocity with a little rounding to be 7.7 .7 meters per second down the track. Note that we have to include both units and directions when asked for a velocity. Since the displacement was in meters and the time was in seconds, our resulting velocity will have units of meters per second. If you forget the units, you'd be marked wrong, as this is an integral part of the answer. If you write 7.7 .7 without the units, it could indicate a wide variety of velocities. 7.7 .7 kilometers per second would be crazy fast. 7.7 .7 centimeters per second would be crazy slow. Remember your units, as it's an integral part of your answer. Also, since we're asked for velocity, and velocity is a vector quantity, we need to include the direction. But the direction is easy, because it's the same direction as the displacement. Since you already know how to deal with direction with displacement, you'll find direction with velocity easy. Just don't forget it. In this case, the velocity is down the track. Another example. Brandon was riding a road bike towards Vernon. He passed a sign saying 30 kilometers to Vernon. His bike computer states that his average velocity so far is 25 kilometers per hour. How long can he predict the rest of the trip will take him? Well, we're told that the V average is 25 kilometers per hour based on his bike computer and his trip so far. And this is a good chance to talk further about what V average is.
Is Brandon going to stay steady at exactly 25 kilometers per hour? Nope. The road to Vernon is a hilly one. On the steep inclines, he might be going 12 kilometers per hour. While on the downhills, he might reach 50 kilometers per hour. These would be his instantaneous velocities. That is the best estimate of his velocity at any particular instant in time. As far as making predictions for how long the rest of his trip would take him, the average velocity would be most useful. If he used 12 kilometers per hour to use his prediction, well, the time would be way too long. Also, if he used 50 kilometers per hour for his prediction, well, the time would be way short. Assuming that the road is similar for the remainder of the trip, the average velocity should give a pretty good estimate. So, back to the question. The displacement he'll be traveling is 30 kilometers towards Vernon. Or the same as saying as change in position. Basically, delta D is 30 kilometers. Now we're looking for the time, so we'll use the formula rearranged for time, like this. And we plug in our numbers, and we get a delta T to be 1.2 hours. We know that it's hours since the velocity was in kilometers per hour, and the kilometers cancel each other out here. So the delta T being 1.2 hours means that this is the change in time over that displacement. It'll take him 1.2 hours more to reach Vernon as our prediction. In this tutorial, we looked at velocity. We saw how velocity is to speed as displacement is to distance. We explored a couple of examples where we calculated average velocity and time. We discussed the difference between average velocity and instantaneous velocity. Now, when working on velocity problems, remember that you need both your units and your directions as part of the answers as these are important parts of any answer.